My name is LaShawn Porter, born and raised here in Detroit, Michigan. My name is Giorgio Majorino. I build homes for a living. Almost three years ago, got sick, had some pain, went to emergency. They took a x-ray of what, you know, of my lungs, thinking I had pneumonia. Lungs were fine. They saw a mass on my liver and colon. It was a shock. You go in thinking, okay, I got pneumonia, have a little bad cold, they'll give me some antibiotics and I'll go home, stay in the bed for a couple days, and then you get this. So LaCharm, once she uh, presented to us, basically was a woman who had a, a liver metastasis from a primary neuroendocrine cancer somewhere else. And her initial cancer was already removed from her body, and the tumors in the liver kept growing. When they obtained the CAT scan, they found that she had multiple masses throughout her liver, and that these masses then led to a workup in terms of the reason for the masses and what type of lesions they represented. In her case, she had had multiple surgeries uh, and multiple attempts at slowing the tumors down with the local regional options, and she had been placed on medication and none of those things seemed to be working. In fact, her tumors were growing fairly aggressively. Ms. Porter was out of options. There was, there was no other good option for her in terms of cancer treatment that would be life-saving. The other treatments that we would have done would have helped her symptoms and would potentially slow the cancer down, but they wouldn't have been life-saving. So once that happened, we had to start thinking a little bit outside the box uh, towards more definitive therapy and that's when we discussed with her the potential for a cluster or multivisceral transplant. I woke up one morning with a very, very bad pain on my right side here, and I said, something's wrong, this ain't me. So as soon as the pain went away, I said, I'm going to the hospital. So I went to Henry Ford, and uh, they took x-rays. They went in there, and the needle, and they took a piece of it. The next night, the doctor called me and said it was cancer. So it ended up that he shrunk all the tumors very small, enough to do the, the chemoembolization, and it worked. But other ones were coming back. And then he came to the point, he says, I can't do no more, but did you ever think of a transplant, you know? And I said, my God, I'll do anything to stay alive, to be alive. I want to go back to my normal life. So Dr. Kai says, you want to do it? We'll do it. So a multivisceral transplant is a situation in which a patient needs more than one organ to be transplanted. In many situations, that's the liver along with the intestine and related organs in that area. Essentially, after his surgery to remove the primary cancer, he had follow-up studies that showed the cancer in the liver. And then he underwent further treatments for that. Uh, appropriately as we normally do for neuroendocrine cancer uh, and eventually the treatments became so significant that in George's case he developed liver failure which was you know basically going to be uh, terminal for him if he didn't have the multivisceral transplant. The major problem with her is her insurance so we had to fight it out with them for I think about two, three months. So it was a lot of you know, time element to get her listed. Even when she's listed, you have to make sure that the cancer has not spread because if it, does, if it did, then the transplant is off the table already. So once we get the call that we have a possible set of uh, organs for a patient, we have to screen the donor, make sure that the size of the donor, the blood group, everything is uh, correct. Once we have a good idea that we're actually going to go out and, and procure the organs, then we call the recipient in. You get the phone call, say, okay, come to the hospital, you come to the hospital, and you're starting to be prepped. Henry Ford called me, and she goes, George, can you come down here and be here by one? I go, what for? <laughs> he goes, it's time we found the organs for you. Well, we get down there, and they started prepping me and everything. And then they came in like about, I want to say, 3.30, doctor came in and he goes, it's a no-go, I'm sorry. After a year and a half waiting on the list, that was the first time they called me, that was Sunday night. Then all of a sudden, Thursday night, we get the same call by 11.30. And it's her again, she goes, we found your donor. And then I ended up uh, going in there and all I remember was kind of seeing the operating room a little and then I was out and I remember waking up a second later in ICU, but it wasn't a second, it was 14, 15 hours later. 
So in George's case, we couldn't guess, but I would say it was less than two months. We were definitely uh, on the line between you know when he was not going to be a candidate anymore um, and getting him done. To have hidden Henry Ford and I been here, I don't know what I would have done. I've been blessed. That's all I can say is that I've been truly blessed. It's extremely gratifying to see these patients uh, not only cured their cancers, but also getting back to life. Seeing any patient that goes through transplant, that goes through a multivisceral transplant or any other form of transplant is vastly rewarding because you're taking a patient that otherwise would have died and you're able to give them a second chance at life and hopefully a very long outcome in which they can live with their family and their friends and have a meaningful life afterwards. I can't say enough of the team that they have. The transplant team is incredible there. It's incredible. And if anybody had to do an operation like that, you got to go to Ford, you got to go to Henry Ford. I'll be a normal guy again and can continue my life thanks to Henry Ford and their doctors, absolutely.